Greetings, Chemistry One. This is the pre-lab video for determining the molar mass of an element. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the atomic mass of an element. It is the average value of the masses of the isotopes in a natural sample of that element. For instance, a carbon-12 atom has been signed the value of 12 atomic mass units. Therefore, by definition, an atomic mass unit, an AMU, is one twelfth mass of a carbon-12 atom. When chemists are doing work, though, they are not dealing with individual atoms or molecules. Instead, they are dealing with a relatively large number of atoms or molecules. In order to make it easier to deal with these numbers, we have the molar mass of an atom or a compound. The molar mass is defined as the mass in grams of one mole of an element. Therefore, the molar mass is equal to Avogadro's number of particles of that element or compound. For example, a carbon-12 atom has a molar mass of 12.0107 grams of carbon, and that would also be equal to Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. In this lab, we are going to be using silver oxide to drive off the oxygen and have silver remaining in the crucible. Now, just a little bit of safety precautions. Number one, we are heating silver oxide. So we need to make sure that we have protective safety glasses on at all time. Anytime we heat anything in the lab, we need to wear our safety goggles. Also, since we are using the Bunsen burners, if you have long hair, you should tie that long hair back. Finally, we're dealing with a crucible, and we've not or we've dealt with these before, and we know that hot crucibles look identical to cold crucibles. So after heating, we should never pick up the crucible with our hands. It will burn us. We should use crucible tongs. During the procedure, folks, you are going to take approximately 1.75 grams of silver oxide and place it in the crucible. When we heat the crucible, we are going to put the cover on the crucible. However, we are going to leave it vented, as in figure 2 right here. Notice the O-ring. Notice the clay triangle. The crucible, the lid, but the lid isn't setting firmly on the crucible. This is because we need to vent the crucible so that the oxygen can escape. So make sure that you have this vented. Now one of the most common injuries that I see in the lab is this is very unsturdy right here. And what could happen is that lid could fall off. Well, the natural reaction is to try to catch the lid before it hits the table or the floor. Well, the lid is very hot. That could result in a burn if you try to catch it. So if your lid would happen to fall off or slip, don't try to catch it, please. Now, when you're done, you're going to have data here. The mass of the crucible and cover that you got at the beginning, mass of the crucible cover and silver oxide, and the mass of the crucible cover and silver after the heating. To do the calculations, you have to follow the directions. And I even help you out in the directions. It says determine the mass of silver. How are you going to do that? You're going to take C minus A. Well, what's C? Right here. What's A? Right here. So you take C minus A, and that will give you the mass of silver. If you go on through and follow the directions, once again, for most of these, I give you a little helper hint on how to make the comp calculations. Finally, when you're done with the calculations, I have three 
questions for you to answer. Now when answering the very third one, what are two likely sources of air in this lab? It should be right there. It says that. It should be lab. So what are two likely sources of air? Be very detailed. Just don't put weighing miscalculations. Okay, you need to have these in complete sentences and you need to be detailed about the source of air. This has been the pre-lab video for determining the molar mass of an element. Ladies and gentlemen, let's investigate.